Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a Netflix original series, Jupiter's Legacy. So it's a drama superhero show. And I find it odd that some of the places list it as a drama something. But it's a superhero show, right up my alley. I will first come out and say... I am not extremely happy with it, but it's one of those things I can understand people liking. I don't give lots of plot hole plots and you know spoilers, so this will be just a surface thoughts type of podcast. But I was excited to watch it. I wasn't familiar with the comic book it's based off of. It's an image comic um, by Mark Millar and Frank Quietly. By the way, when I hear Frank Quietly, I think bad art, but Hey, all artists, you know, that's all just subjective, I guess. It's started on Netflix. It stars Josh Duhamel, Ben Daniels, Leslie Bibb, Andrew Horton, Alina Camporis, Mike Wade, Matt Lanter. One of them you recognize, two, three. However, the show is littered with great actors, or well, let's say great performances and shitty performances. The show is like a mixed bag for me. First off, I'll say this, if it's a minor spoiler. You want to do a flashback origin coexisting with your storyline for the first season. You gotta do it right. Now, this is where I would say, objectively, the show, it, it, did it, it didn't do it right. It, it, it's bad. However, anybody can like anything, so this, that's not to say... This isn't going to be a love show, which I would be happy for. I want all superhero stuff for quality. And this has it to be recognized and given legitimacy. So I look at the whole first season as a failed experiment, but that could be righted. You could correct it and move it forward. And again, this is a show that's trying to do something, but I feel like the elements are taken from all the things put together in an idea and when it came to putting it out as a first season it feels like someone decided hey we got to do let's do the origin in the background in a different era of time so what you have is a story developing in let's say current time these powers whatever you want to call them by the way it does remind me of the playstation 4 show powers it was an interesting show, great ideas, and just couldn't find its uh, groove as a PlayStation show. But this seems like uh, too much of a disconnect or an editing mistake. Uh, decisions on when to put a cutscene in that goes back in time to the 20s or uh, so on and so forth. And I think that really drew me out of the show. You forget about people, you want to see people, you don't understand certain things, and fine. Look, I like piecing it together, I don't need everything spoon-fed to me. I like some of the performances. There's some, there's one side character's father in a flashback that is amazing. It's just, you, I feel it, and I didn't feel nothing for the characters. So, I don't buy the concept. And I think that's the first thing that occurred to me as I was thinking on the show, watching it. I'm like, I don't buy this. I don't buy the attitudes of the people. I didn't buy the, oh, let's drink beer and chill out type attitude it was trying to have. And they kind of got rid of that really fast. It just feels, I don't know, it feels like a, an attempt to bring something unique and it it, it falls short on some instances. You're going to have some good acting mixed in with some bad. And I mean, I don't even know how they got on the show. That, again, could be just a, you know, a, a subjective thing. Fine. I could see people going, oh, I loved every bit of it. You know? And a lot of times it's not about, you know, what you like, what you love. Like, I love a show. I watch fucking Green Lantern movie. And it's not a good movie. It's bad. But I, I enjoy it. So understanding that i do want to really enjoy these shows 
So, in the end, do I get excitement from this show? I don't think so. I see potential. It's almost like the reverse of The Boys. Like, the the Boys first season gets you right away. You're just hooked. All through it. Yeah, it's got a little bit of nitpicks in it. But it just wowed me. Second season disappointed me. But it's it's the charm and some of the good stuff is still there. This I see having to write itself to... The start of season two, in my opinion, would leave out flashbacks. Do not do it. I don't care if you're saving money, your super fights. Some look great. Some look horrible. Some special effects look good. Some look half-ass. It's like I said. If you if you know the show called Powers, it's a PlayStation Four game. I can't even believe I'm saying PlayStation Network game, or whatever it was. It had those elements, and um, I think it also came from a graphic novel had some adult themes, and it just doesn't land well here. I, I don't buy the relationship between the family. It's just whatever. It's Although the husband and wife are great, it's the children aspect and this code thing they go with, and it, they're trying to do their thing, and I get it. I just don't buy it. It didn't feel real. I have no attachment, and the major twist, I guessed, seven to ten minutes into the show as soon as i started seeing the people interacting with um let's call them the main character uh, it just was obvious to me and maybe that's a curse now uh, i don't know um it just you know the utopian and the name i can even get over some of the names you know like the paragon they're cool i've used them in my own playing in a sense there's not enough Attack, like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know if it's a personal thing. And I start to come to this realization with a lot of things. I have a bias, yes. I somewhat consider myself maybe a writer and to some extent. And would I do things differently and they don't match up and you try to, you know, hey, this went in a different way. I don't think that's it with this. I really wanted to like it. I thought the idea was great, uh, uh, not even knowing about the graphic novel much. And it's just the finished product that's put out is not good for me. I should not have guessed the brother angle, even as much as they tried to hide it. And it just, I don't know, it was so disappointing in that sense. But I look at everything, and I try to look at the good things too, so... You have a really strong lead character and the wife. They really hold the show. At least keep your interest. But there's not enough of it when you're trying to give me de-aging and aging makeup. And then going back to the 20s and showing their origin. You know what I probably would have thought would have been a better idea? An origin show first. Or, you know, you do your second season type thing. So... It would all be 1920s. Even do, okay, three episodes, 1920s. Then finish out your season with the rest five with um, catching up to the, what's currently happening. And maybe put a couple of uh, bookends on some of the episodes that show you what's going on currently. May, see, I don't even know if that would have worked for me. I found it jarring and not believable to begin with with the interpersonalities. Then I got to go back and see how they became who they are. And I didn't buy that either. I didn't buy this um, whole destiny aspect and then it was laid out before people. And people were like, okay, there's some believable moments and interactions. But on the whole, I felt, I don't know, I felt like just a bland... Um, bland experience in the sense of interactions and premises that came from what you're looking at in the past and then what's going on and you don't know where one character is at a moment then it's another then they do a little thing in one episode and like oh it catches up to someone's perspective and how the fuck did you know it just i don't know on the whole but i can see it though this could be another thing that is just something that people love and i don't get excited for or get, which I'll probably watch. I mean, I'm not excited to watch it, but neither was I about Arrow, and I got through, I don't know, four or five seasons of that before I fucking gave up. Same with Flash. 
Um, I do plan on finishing The Flash eventually. Not the other type of shows, maybe Supergirl, but that got horrible. I just don't know um, what will capture the excitement of the movies and what like Marvel, let's say Marvel's doing with the movies and to some extent DC and they're trying but I don't see this doing it I don't feel this is something I'm waiting for next season for um, the boys 2 trailer for season 2 is exciting like, I don't see myself even caring it'll be on, it'll be released and I'll be like okay I'll, I'll catch up on that, I'll do a podcast see how it's doing maybe it'll correct things for me so when you look at it, I don't enjoy the show in that sense. I didn't feel satisfied. I didn't feel um, as if I was given a whole story to chew on and really dive into. They had the decision to give us the present, and then every episode is a balance between present and past. But you've got characters in the present who aren't in the past. You've got the children of them who di- seem to disappear, or if, if that's their power, I don't know. And, the, and all right, I don't like the fucking actor, the son on the show. He doesn't fit in. He feels like he doesn't work on the show. The daughter, fine. I don't like the portrayal and the not like. You can't try to be, uh, you know, adult and stuff. And, and the dialogue doesn't work right. I don't, it doesn't feel like real people. And even if it's a superhero world, it's trying to say, hey. This is a real superhero um, family, I guess, or whatever. There's a origin episodes, the whole fucking season's an origin episode, and you find out how it came to be, and they consider themselves sort of family, but then the two people get together, have children, and I guess other people and other things have children. You start finding out that these are legacy characters, that they take up the mantle, some of them. So, you're trying to be real adult. You're trying to keep um, the dialogue, uh, you know, in key with young people growing up and giving them the angst of superheroes and what do they do. And his whole, uh, well, his or the show's whole code type thing really seems taken. Oh, really? Now, this guy could have been the guy who did it. Like, you don't know... In the comic, so is this the guy who in Superman Kingdom Come um, had some writing stuff and said, Oh, you know what? I want to do, I want to do um, someone uh, Superman doesn't kill the Joker, and some new superhero of a new generation kills him, and he gets popularity. And it feels like that Kingdom Come thing, and it's like it's done so well in the comics, I don't know if they'll ever do a movie on it. Definitely don't use Zack Snyder for that, please. This seems like an effort was worth it. I get it, you know. What we have a cold, you know, we don't kill. But when you go into the logic of it, you know, I have in my own world, uh, I run a role playing games and I play superhero uh, campaigns in my own world. And I run it. And there are some things that I use from time to time where, you know, if Superman is doing something and he won't want a character who's going to kill, um, you know, and they get that kind of conversation, or Batman in one of the adventures I ran told one of my characters, not my character, the player, um, no killing, that type of thing, and it was more, even in a fight, in an argument, so they have a code that they don't break, and it's not really logical in that way, it the, It's like, if you put the logic down to a policeman, I think they even bring this up. So you have a policeman, a normal average guy, he has to decide, hey, I have to use lethal force. Either to protect myself, protect the community, or whatever it is, right? Why we incarcerate people, the whole deal. But a superhero who works for the union, whatever the fuck, that's what they call it, I think, the union. And you can't kill, Right? So when you're watching this fight and you're going, wow, this is, uh, these are tough characters. Boom, bang, boom, power displays, power displays. And then it feels so cheapened when one of the people kills the character and you go, hold on a second, hold on. You've been 
getting beat up, knocked me unconscious, near death, and you knew you could kill this guy? Like, it was easy to kill this guy? Look, I get it. You want to hold up a, uh, that thing, no kill, but you're putting into context what's going on. Let's say the guy is going to go nuclear. Okay, you don't blame a policeman for shooting a guy. You don't blame a superhero for taking him out. And this is where the strife is supposed to be coming from and this turmoil with a new generation that can it's not black and white no more. I see where they're going. I just don't think it's executed very well. Then even further, somewhere down the line, is another confrontation, and they bring this to the forefront with a so-called villain character and some Arkham Asylum type fucking thing. Some installation is like, got the guy sucks. He's like, ah, oh, I'm going to make you break your thing. You either kill me and save your son or uphold your cold and... Like, okay, so if he upholds his code and doesn't kill the guy before he kills his son, he keeps his code, but his son's going to be killed. Or he breaks his code, kills the guy, and saves his son. And it's supposed to be this big thing. And then I'm like, it, it fell flat. It just didn't work when he goes, oh, use your laser beams on my jugular. Hold on, so you want me to watch um, you're the Utopian in a brawl? Breaking buildings, getting thrown through walls, getting knocked unconscious, his wife near dead, his other members of the group, or whatever they are, getting killed. When he's just brawling out to brawl it out when he could end the fight? It, it just didn't, it, it, it's, it falls so hollow. I don't know how they didn't recognize that. Now, for some people, it might not, fine. But for me, it was like, I just called bullshit. Everything was lost. There's no stakes no more. It doesn't feel like this strife, this thing has any weight. And they're doing it throughout the whole show. The son um, d defeats the character and uh, has to kill him. And it's a fucking clone or something. Yeah, spoilers, whatever. I'm actually getting a little upset now thinking about the fucking show. Because these are the things that are, uh, bothered me. And like I said, it's got some great aspects to it. But as a whole... I would give it a four or five. It's um, below average in some aspects, but I'm not going to be surprised if people like this. This is one of those things, I think. Hey, you have a vision. You put it out there. This is the way it wants to go. I can understand that. If I was writing my own silly fucking uh, Shaolin monks who use drugs to enhance their martial arts and get abilities, okay, you know, I get it. I just didn't like it way it was put out there. You got politics. They try to put in. They don't use too much. And I don't know. You've got some great performances, though. Uh, the brothers, uh, Ben Daniels as Walt. I don't know if they give his fucking name his brainwave, but really top performance. He's like probably the best thing in the show. And the, the, the lead guy, da, Josh Duhamel, I think it's the guy from. Uh, Transformers movies. He's like the lead gung ho army guy, something like that. And it pulled off Leslie Bibb as the wife, that Lady Liberty. She's great. It works. However, you can get these great actors, but the it just the writing feels short. The world feels thin and not not enough substance. Like it just doesn't feel right. You go through these flashbacks, and I didn't like that. The collision of oh and sometimes i think they even swipe like they were trying like oh let's swipe right of the screen and go into a flashback let's like and i'm talking about, like you know the the frame of that scene goes black to the side like it just felt i didn't i don't know i look at it again and go i can see people liking this it's not devoid of stuff that would make it a enjoyable show but i'm not labeling this a good show great show no uh it has the potential to be good great yeah fine you've got the elements here it seems to be done right but you have to rein it in sometimes don't be adult just to be adult don't just have sex have sex give me stupid scenarios that don't make sense 
And you got this daughter flying around the show, don't, or, doing whatever the fuck's going on, and you're going to try to connect this and connect this, and, oh, it just fucking, it feels all over the place, and you got that on top of flashbacks. I don't see the benefit in this, and the narrative, and how it pushes the narrative, and some, there's some, like, rule, you know, all your dialogue and scenes should push the story forward, and I guess if you analyze it, it might have those aspects to it, like, the daughter's not with the family that much, but her her machinations, like whatever she's doing, is going to bring her full circle, and it's going to be part of the whole story. Fine. Where's the son? Oh, the son that started the thing in the beginning and had to make a decision. He's going through things. Well, where is he? I don't know. Oh, he's back. He's doing fucking farming. And then you're going to rip a scene out of Smallville, but okay. These things, guess would work better. Maybe if you told me that, um, you know, showrunners move and uh, writers have to leave. Like, I could see it. Look, one of my favorite superhero shows ever for one season is Heroes. I recommend anybody go back. You watch the first season of Heroes, and it might be the best comic book origin type genesis of a show ever. It holds up to this day. You don't got enough money to do superpowers in a certain way? Do it smart. That's what Heroes did in the beginning. All right, look. It ran four seasons, and the second season got hit by the strike in Heroes. I still like the second season, by the way. It's just not going to be touted to me as a, a, a greatness and classic. It's just serviceable and fun for me. It's enjoyable, but I don't want to critically say it's great. Heroes, the first season, is amazing. This is not. I can't. I can't do that. You know. I don't think this is going to get the approval from major critics. If, if oh, who cares about major critics, right? I don't give a fuck what your name is and what your uh, what your jazz snazzy uh, quip lines are on your podcast. I don't think this could be critically looked at. And given the seal of approval, I just don't feel it. However, taking biases aside and my feelings, um, I seem to be thinking that there could be so many improvements in this. So there is something I see in it, and I will give it a shot. It's not worthless. It's something I actually recommend because I have that feeling. Like when I do a podcast and I talk about um, Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, another thing, like it's just. Not for me, it's got the pacings wrong, the characters suck, but I can't see people enjoying a good zombie movie mixed in with a heist movie. But you look at, I'll bring it up again, Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League uh, remake, it's garbage, it's fucking shit. It's bullshit, it's a scam type fucking thing, and that's my feelings on it. Now, if I was doing an in-depth critique, and I was going to do a two-hour podcast on you know, Jupiter's legacy, I would try to show and show that where the pacing and the believability ends for me and where things go a certain way where I could see, you know what, I, my friend's going to like this or some person X is enjoying this. Fine. I didn't. And trying to look between, you know, the lenses of, uh, you know, a critic and a fan, I, I try to balance that out. So, Looking at this as a whole, I see elements of, I don't know what you want to call it, greatness. Is I see a lot probably could happen, but I also see like a major flaws in it that I don't know if it would be something that is that could really hold up. You wanted to end it on um, a cliffhanger, but I don't know if it was if that was too late. So, you go through the show and there's hints of who's behind certain things. And there's some plot coming together in a certain sense. And when it's revealed about this certain angle, like I said, I don't like to give too many plots or spoilers. I wasn't surprised because I guessed it from the beginning. I knew right from the first couple of minutes of them being in the show, I just, my eyes were drawn to this character and knew. Uh, so it's revealed at the end. Now, 
I think that hurts the show in a certain way because if you're like me or if you're a critic, maybe or with certain preferences like me, that's too late. You did at the end of the episode, but you, you lost me in the middle. Right? So all this um, commitment to the flashback and the origin, which is, look, you might say it's needed. Fine. I would say you do that in chunks or you do it differently. Look, I'm not the editor, but I would have done, definitely done it different. I might have made uh, like the first three episodes current and then do two episodes flashback but not cut it the way they did i think it really hurt them now arrow did this for a fucking lots of seasons and they did it well in the beginning and then they ruined the fucking show it really hurt the show i don't say they ruined it but it hurt the show this starts off right off the bat and it's a gamble so what do we get from this show? We get a pretty decent angle on a storyline that has to do with superpowers and responsibility and codes, right? So we don't want to mess with politics. We don't kill, you know, and it's a family dynamic for the most part. And you got characters that come in as side characters that are just so bad that they don't add to the show. It feels like you're just drawing me out. These guys, people are supposed to be oozing charisma. They don't. And it just doesn't work when you've got... The, all right, so the daughter's a really great actress. She seems to be great in this. You want to play the fucked up druggy daughter? She's great in it. It's fine. But you don't write the right stuff for her. And you don't put her in the right pos- uh, situations. And then you want me to believe she's ending up with this hacky fucking actor? It just doesn't work. You know, sometimes there's a reason why, you know, casting people go for someone who's stoic or a charismatic leader, dark and brooding. You don't want to make this a bag of everybody shaken up and mixed things. It, just, it didn't work in, a, in this type of genre for me. Now, it can work. Like I said, if you watch Heroes, the first season, fucking amazing. You just start loving the characters side characters pop up you can't believe you like them even more real smart casting real smart um dialogue connecting things you want to do your flashback boom do one episode of a flashback of a character we're wondering about right it made sense it fits this doesn't for me i've got to watch a cast of characters centered on a family with ancillary people who were involved in an origin story and then watch that story play out side by side, episode after episode, with the current stuff. And then the current stuff isn't pieced together well, so you lose track of the son, the daughter, what's going on, why is someone mad at this person, why is that person upset and angry? And I find myself someone who thinks they can follow things, so I'm like looking at it and saying, okay, yeah, you know, I missed this or that, and... It's the show's fault. I don't know. But even um, looking at it more critically, I feel I would be able to make a case that it's bad or it's, it's wrong. You don't do it here. All right. All right. Fine. You're right. Uh, the, this does explain something. But why not move it to the end of the show? Why not make every last quarter of the end of the show the flashback or the beginning? The fr- All right. So, you know, shows open up with that first scene. Why not make that first eight minute scene the flashback? But continue it in current something different had to be done here for me and i don't enjoy it as a whole again this is one of those things though you see some of the greatness like i see the some of the things that make this show could make this show great i don't think it's going to have a foundation in legs when you look at the shows which is sad because i would say it's probably better than um the general uh, legion of superheroes or legends of tomorrow and Supergirls, and maybe portions of the flesh but you got eight episodes to pull this out right you're doing the netflix thing and marvel's daredevil did it better jessica jones even the subcategory a lesser um to, in my view the lesser quality shows like iron fist which is probably the weakest but one's like um luke cage that i loved but i could see the flaws in it i kind of like aspects of this but as a whole 
thing, swallowing it, eating it, finishing, wiping my mouth, I was disappointed. It's a superhero show, and I know it's drama involved. I get where they were going. Executed wrong. I didn't like the pacing, and editing is horrible, in my opinion, for certain things. The relationship is just not believable. I don't believe, I didn't buy the world. And I, you, I could have bought it, because I bet you I would read the comic and I would love it. In, to some certain extent it just wasn't executed properly and I think that's where this lands I don't know if this is going to be second season I I wouldn't be surprised if it was but if it is a second se- if, if there isn't a second season the show really shit the bed because it tried to do something at the end and thinking oh this is going to be great we're going to get this twist that is going to really Hurt the, hurt the main characters because it's so close. He's, he's such a great fucking actor. His role is amazing. He's got like the best stuff to do in the show. Besides when you think the main characters should have it. It feels... He's like the best thing in some of the flashbacks. Except for that one side character's father is amazing. Um, the themes, everything, you know. They just don't work well together. It's almost like I could put this together in a different... I could take all these pieces in a puzzle and make a better show. And I think that's where I'll end this in general. Jupiter's Legacy, a Netflix original show. Hey, good on you. You tried to do something well. I don't know if a lot of these things that are done like this will hurt the industry, if there's a, if that makes sense. Like, can you make enough stuff that's just barely tolerable? good as a whole and enough people are going to see the things that i think that are great and it makes it better for them i'm not sure but i think it's something to check out it's got a angle it's it does it okay and it's one of those things in my mind i keep thinking someone is gonna like this i can see that but it's just not for me maybe and you know just trying to be honest i hope everybody's doing well Enjoy the summer. Take care, everybody. I'll talk to everybody next time. Bye-bye.